Seconded. Uh, we move on then to motion 99 uh, in the name of the James Connolly Dungarvan branch. Have we a mover? That, yes, that was done this morning. It still remained on this list. Um, now, SIP2 to uh, propose motion 100. Uh, the National President, Jack O'Connor. Uh, uh, ch Chair, Delegates, Jack O'Connor, SIP2, uh, moving motion 100. Uh, d delegates, uh, we all know we're in a mess, but uh, it may not be generally known that we have the distinction here in this country of having experienced the biggest fall in employment in any industrialised country since the Great Depression during this collapse over the last few years. Similarly, domestic demand has fallen here in this country by more than 24 per cent, a way in excess of the level experienced in any other European country. Investment has fallen from in excess of 48 billion in, in, in 2007 down to about 18 billion. The private sector delegates has retreated and we all know that there will be no growth without investment. Yet our government, of which our party is a part, is prohibited from utilising the remainder of the National Pension Reserve Fund of 5.5 billion euro to try to create the basis of a, a new stimulus for, uh, for growth. They are prohibited from doing so by reason of the restriction on public spending in the Troika Agreement. And yet, while we find ourselves in that situation, there is over 70 billion euro owned by Irish people on the balance sheets of Irish pension funds, most of which, the vast, proportion, the vast majority of which, uh, is invested across the globe. And the proposition that is inherent in this motion, delegates, envisages incentivising those funds to invest about 6% uh, 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 of, uh, of their balance sheets on the basis of exemptions from the pen pensions levy. And that would net out at about 3.5%, and that would generate about 4 billion euro. And that would provide co funding for an equivalent amount from the National Pension Reserve Fund, which would enable the government to meet the Eurostat criteria and have the money designated as public investment, which would be permitted rather than public spending. And this delegate could produce a fund of the order of 7 billion euro for critically important infrastructural investment which is key to our growth uh, and development and indeed the skills retention in our economy as well. Further resources delegates could be leveraged from the European Investment Bank and it's quite conceivable, quite feasible to think in terms of a fund of 10 billion euro over three years or quite possibly 15 uh, over five years. Uh, invested at the rate of 3, of three billion euro uh, uh, per year over the next three years. And this delegates would at least offset the deflationary effect of the last budget, the next budget and the, bu and the two budgets after that. Uh, we should recognise, uh, uh, delegates, that each one billion uh, of uh, euro uh, invested in, in infrastructure is estimated to have the capacity to generate 10,000 jobs in our economy. I do know, and we do acknowledge it, that uh, several of our ministers uh, approve of this approach. Uh, d d d Minister uh, Burton mentioned it this morning, and Minister Howland, uh, and I have to compliment him on it, has, 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 has paid particular attention uh, to, to, to trying to progress this. I'll finish on this, uh, uh, Chair, but it does need a much more focused uh, 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 approach at the highest level of government with a powerful pensions industry. There are a great many things that we cannot do. This is something that we can do, and this could be the key to our, uh, our recovery. Thanks, uh, delegates.